Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Alberta Canola Producers Commission, SAS Canola, and Manitoba Canola Girl. Kelvin Hepner with Real Agriculture, joined by Yvonne Lawley of the University of Manitoba. And Yvonne, uh, this harvest season in much of Western Canada, it's been wet and we're seeing compaction and uh, farmers looking at ways to, uh, to manage or, uh, or deal with this compaction. You've done a fair bit of research in the area of radishes and using cover crops. What, uh, what kind of potential is there for, for using a radish to, uh, to deal with compaction? How does it work? So we don't often think about plants as a tool to manage soil compaction. And uh, so using things like cover crops as plant, as soil management tools is something that I'm very interested in. We have many different goals that we can be using for uh, growing cover crops. And one goal that has been uh, identified and studied in the U.S. is using uh, cover crops to alleviate soil compaction. And we think about um, some of the different tillage tools that we have to alleviate soil compaction, plants do the same thing but in a very different way. And it's important to understand that mechanism to be able to use them effectively to reach that target goal for cover crops. Um, so radishes are a cover crop that are being uh, sold specifically for compaction alleviation. You see that in a lot of the names that are given to radish cover crops. Um, and, uh, and with radish cover crops, we often think about this big uh, radish root here. This is, I would say, a moderately sized one here, about an inch and a half in diameter. Um, but they can grow, you know, as large as my, as my forearm here. Um, and you often see pictures of people growing gigantic radishes. But it's not that part of the radish root that's doing the really hard work of alleviating soil compaction. In fact, um, here we have a soil here at Portage that actually has a fairly substantial root restricting layer here, about two inches deep for about a good 10 inches. And, um, and here we see that the roots of this radish are growing along the, the ped faces and the planes, uh, cracks in between uh, soil uh, here in this, uh, in this soil. And it's these fine root hairs that are actually the mechanism or the means that plants can be used to alleviate soil compaction. So um, it's a two-step process. One is growing uh, roots that can push through this root restricting layer, and we call this biodrilling. And then when those roots decompose or die and decompose, they leave channels behind. And uh, those channels are what subsequent crops that you grow, um, like wheat or canola or corn and soybeans, can access um, to grow through a root restricting layer. So if we look, uh, more closely here at this radish that I've dug, we can see some soil aggregates. And we see that the roots in this aggregate are growing along the faces between the soil particles. And when we take a piece of soil from deeper in the soil profile, we see here that there are fewer roots. And when we look through this, uh, through this plane here, we see some holes where the roots were growing. And there aren't very many of them compared to the surface of the soil where we have more abundant roots and, um, and, uh, and more aggregates. So we need to create these channels and protect these channels so that when uh, the crop that you're trying to grow is trying to find its way, explore the, the soil um, to establish its rooting system, it's got a, cha a place to go um, to grow its roots and follow those channels. So you can actually see here you know, this little root hair coming out of that small little hole there. And those are the kinds of holes that plant roots can create and we can collect and accumulate those roots, uh, root channels and, uh, and, and alleviate soil compaction through a different mechanism than just coming through and tilling the soil. So it takes a few different things to make this strategy work. One is you need to protect and preserve those root channels. So if you're in a tillage system that you have frequent and intensive tillage, cover crops and alleviating soil compaction is, going to be, is, is not going to be very effective. But if you are able to direct seed, um, you'll be able to avail yourself of those, of those root channels. Or if you're in no-till or minimum till systems, you're going to be able to accumulate some of those root channels over time. So are there certain rad or are radishes the best or, or are there other cover crops? What, what, uh, how do they compare in terms of that, that bio drilling uh, ability? So radishes um, 
are, are a good option in that they have a lot of root pressure. Um, so they are better able to push through root restricting layers. Um, there are certainly other crops or cover crops that you can select that can achieve the same thing. Um, but maybe not as well as, as radishes. I'm sure that there are other crops out there that have yet to been discovered that could be, could be doing these same things. So um, if radishes don't fit into your rotation, maybe because you're growing a lot of canola and this is another brassica cover crop, I think it's still the same concept can be used um, to, for different types of cover crops. Um, in, the, in, the, in Maryland, um, there's been research from the University of Maryland um, in the lab group of Ray Weil, where they actually compared rye cover crops to uh, radish cover crops, and they found that radish was better able to push through root restricting layers or more abundance of uh, radish roots below root restricting layers compared to rye. But rye certainly had roots below those root restricting layers, so it's, it's a question of, of numbers and frequency. The other thing that's important for making this bio drilling work well is uh, moisture conditions when that cover crop is growing. So uh, in many places, cover crops are grown in the shoulder seasons, early in the spring, late in the fall, often when uh, soils are moist or wetter and those roots are better able to push through those root restricting layers. So if you're um, intentionally using a cover crop to, to tackle soil compaction, you're gonna wanna think about how you can maximize that time in the shoulder seasons when your soil is wetter to let those uh, cover crop roots grow. Other um, things that you might wanna think about in terms of using cover crops to alleviate soil compaction, maybe you are in an intensively tilled system where you know using bio drilling is not very realistic. Cover crops may still have a role to play in, um, in managing soil compaction through, through other means in terms of overall soil health. So if you have a well aggregated soil um, whose peds are held together firmly, um, that soil is gonna be better able to withstand the forces of traffic on top of it, um, be it tractors or, or grazing livestock. So having well aggregated soil with high organic matter is an important consideration. Um, it's also a symptom of compacted soil that you have poor water infiltration and we see that um, that may be one of the first things that you see if you're working with a compacted soil, you might see ponded water. And so cover crops have a role to play there as well in terms of um, uh, uh, the surface of the soil. So by providing cover, you can keep the, um, the macropores at the surface of the soil open longer so that water can infiltrate into that soil. Um, as well with crops like radishes, oh, I've got my boots stuck here. Um, as well as uh, you know, cover crops like radishes, um, or maybe paja or something like that that has that swollen taproot, um, those large channels can also help with infiltration after they die and decompose the next spring. So there's bio drilling as a mechanism for um, soil compaction alleviation, as well as just improving soil health to make soil aggregates, make them more resistant. Um, to or better able to traffic large pieces of equipment and uh, and also managing water at the surface so better infiltration of water into the soil so fair to say you see potential for more application of of cover crops for this use in western canada i think that there are uh there are definitely things that we should be looking at from from this strategy and i think we're going to have to adapt them to our cropping systems and so there's some some great work that we have ahead of us to figure out how we can take these tools and principles and apply them here in western canada all right thanks for your time Yvonne.